Hi all, welcome back to this screencast. In the last video, we learnt the basics of Python, and although you are not expected to understand each and every bit of the syntax of the program that we wrote in the last video, uh, it is good if you understood it. Uh, if you faced any issues while running the program, it is totally acceptable because the whole point of the screencast is to teach you Python. So nobody under expects you to understand everything along from starting from the first video itself. So we'll be doing a deep dive inside the syntax of Python and you will need to follow the link given in the description to the second chapter of this uh, ebook uh, and you just first read the chapter and then go continue with this video because otherwise it is not I mean it won't be that clear to you when you look at the uh, video so let's just start now in the last video itself we saw there are two modes of writing code in Python one is using the interactive prompt and the other is to write everything inside a text file and save it as something.py and using the interpreter to run the file so now there are two interpreters or there are multiple interpreters available by default python3 is the interpreter now python3 the default is a default interpreter and it offers slightly uh, less sophisticated features so we'll be using ipython if you want to install ipython you can use pip a pip install ipython or pip3 install ipython depending on the version of python you are in so just uh, if you want to exit this terminal you have to use control d on mac or linux and control z on windows in windows you have to press ctrl z and hit enter only then it is uh, only then will it exit it if you don't want to use ctrl z you can just type in exit function it will kill the interpreter if you use ctrl z on a mac or a linux then it is going to go push the process back into the background so i will suggest you to avoid that uh, now I'll be using IPython. We saw in the last video IPython gives me advanced features. We won't be using all of the advanced features, but uh, it is helpful. So, what this uh, interactive prompt will do is you can write programs in this, and it will evaluate each line of the input that you give so let's say I want to print all the even numbers from 1 to 100 so what I'll do is So that was a small program which will print all the even numbers. Now range of 100 is a function that will return you a range object and I will get to that later but in essence this is going to be uh, all similar to a list of 100 values that is an array of 100 values. So it is a bit complicated to understand it up front so just imagine having a list over here so what i did was i wrote i wrote these four statements and i'll just type it again see now this one now i typed the code and then i hit enter now i got the prompt again so if you want to write something then write something if you don't want to write something and if you want this program to execute as it is just hit enter again 
so for the sake of understanding this i'll move that 100 to 10 and i'll just hit again so you can see this block was um, this statement is empty and the block got executed so this is one place where you might have stumbled upon in the last video so okay so this is the interpreter so now what i can do is i can see i so currently the value of i is 9 because range will return uh, 0 to 9 because we have just mentioned 10 so it is always it always returns 10 minus 1 n minus 1 if you pass range of n here what i can do i can initialize new variable equal to now python is a case sensitive language now new var is going to be different from new underscore var so we have to be careful this is not sql where it is case insensitive and it doesn't matter which case we write code on so in the interactive prompt i can i can write programs and each line can be one program uh, or each statement each interpreter prompt basically is a new line of your program so i can import os files equal to i can just type files now i don't have any file in my current folder so that is fine i'll get uh, i'm in ch2 folder of my code so this is all fine so this is the motto of the uh, interactive prompt so if i want to kill this session i have to either type exit i have to call the exit function or i'll type control d on mac or linux or control z enter on windows just type y and i exit it now the other way of running a python program is write code inside it so i create a file called as file.py sorry uh, this should be python 3 uh, when we were in python 2 list used to take an argument a struct argument in python 3 what they did was if you don't pass an argument to list dir, then it is going to be by default dot a single dot which means the current working directory so my f this program is going to print file.py because that is the only file present Now I'm not sure if you can see this. So this is the code which we wrote yesterday also. Okay, so these this basically are the two ways that we can write code in Python. The third way is the hybrid way. So what I'll do is I'll split my big program into multiple small blocks say functions i will get to functions later and what i'll do is i'll first uh, write a block in any text file or something like that then i'll copy paste that block inside an interpreter session i'll check if it is valid or not and then i'll copy paste that or i'll modify it in the interpreter itself and then i'll bring that stuff back inside my code so that is the hybrid model which typically people use if they don't want to get into the hassle of using a debugger if you are okay with a debugger then feel free to go that way
But I typically write code in this way. I first use the interpreter and then I keep on writing and adding stuff to it. I typically use IPython. You can also look into Jupyter Notebooks. The spelling is J-U-P-Y-T-E-R. I believe their domain is jupyter.org. Uh, they have a, a nice web application and Jupyter 2 is actually going to be very awesome once they I mean, cross the beta and alpha stage and are live. So this video was about how to run Python program, the two modes, interactive mode and the file execution mode. So if you have any questions, then please open an issue on my on the GitHub project. You will find the link of the project below. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned for the next video.